In this video, we'll be doing some preventative maintenance on a Kohler 7.3E marine generator. We plan to replace the spark plugs, zinc anode, raw water impeller and o-ring, oil change and oil filter, and lastly a fuel filter. First up, you'll want to remove the sound shield by first opening the front cover and removing that and then unscrewing the three bolts on the top cover and removing the top cover which will also remove the left side. Our first job of the day, we will be removing the old oil using a standard suction oil pump. You can also drain the oil out of the housing using the drain plug, but I didn't have the right size tube to connect to it, so I used the suction method. There's not a whole lot of oil in these generators, only about a quart and a half. This is the messiest part of the job. Uh, you will have a lot of oil come out of the oil filter when you uh, unscrew it from the motor. So just make sure you have a lot of rags to catch any oil that pours out. You'll want to lubricate the new oil filter gasket with just a little bit of oil. And then screw the oil filter on snugly. I just use hand strength. I don't use the filter wrench to tighten it too much. My generator had Autolite 65 spark plugs in it when uh, I replaced these plugs, so I replaced them with the same Autolite 65. The old plugs appeared in pretty decent shape, however it was taking about 8 seconds or so to start the generator with the old plugs. I was hoping a replacement would help that out a bit. The Kohler manual specifies 0.6 to 0.7 millimeters gap on the spark plugs. I use straight 40 weight oil in my generator. You may need a different weight oil depending on the temperatures expected in your area. It's a good idea to lubricate your throttle linkage and the choke linkage. I just use some spray WD-40 type oil. My antifreeze level was a little low, so I added whatever I had left. I was pleased to see that the engine started up very quickly after a couple cranks. It used to take about eight seconds, so those plugs definitely made a difference.
The impeller cover is on the right side of the generator. It's very easy to remove just by pulling it up on the lever. There are four bolts securing the impeller cover. Check the scoring on the inside of the cover. If it's badly scored, you may want to replace this. I didn't have a new cover, so I just reused the one I had. Removing the impeller is relatively easy. You could uh, pull the whole housing off of the shaft and then use the shaft to push the impeller out of the housing. That's the easy part. Getting it back in is a little more difficult. This old impeller was in really good shape and it hasn't changed at all from last year when I checked it. The kit I purchased included an O-ring, which you will need for the impeller housing, relatively easy to replace. They suggest using liquid dish soap to lubricate the impeller before installing. Installing the new impeller is the most difficult part. I found the best method was to slowly twist it clockwise as pushing in until it engaged the keyway on the shaft and then once that point is reached you could easily push it in. Make sure you don't lose the new o-ring before installing the cover and the cover only reinstalls in one direction. I sprayed some WD-40 on these threads because this is the raw water and it would have a tendency to uh, corrode the metal. Next up was replacing the pencil zinc on the heat exchanger. Real simple to do. Just unscrew the old and place the new. Last on the list is replacing the fuel filter. And I'm sorry I missed the uh, first minute or so video. Uh, fuel filter is located underneath the lower right hand side of the uh, generator. It's got a small metal cover, comes off with a few screws. Uh, first you're going to want to loosen the gas line hose use, that has a hose clamp on it. I loosen that up. It's a little difficult to pull off at first so I started to unscrew the filter itself uh, before I was able to uh, twist the hose a little bit and actually get it off the barb fitting at the end. Just have some rags handy to pick up 
some of the fuel that will leak out of here. And then you'll need to uh, remove the filter and any additional fittings that you'll need to transfer over to the new filter. I used a little bit of Teflon tape on the threads, not too much. You want to tighten the fittings, but not too tight because the filter is a little delicate and it would bend if you uh, lay into it a little too much. So here you have the finished product, everything tight. Next you want to check if it leaks. So there you have it, a full preventative maintenance video for the Kohler 7.3e. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comments section. And don't forget to like and subscribe for our future videos.